Uh, um, thank you, uh, everyone, for having me. Uh, thanks, Amy, for the invite and the careful organization of the webinar. Uh, actually, the, the entire year of uh, great webinars uh, that Amy organized uh, the entire year. Uh, thank you very much for uh, all this uh, uh, amazing work at Agra. And uh, the outline of this presentation, uh, I will start with a brief introduction. I spend uh, just a, one slide or two uh, telling uh, something about Embrapa, uh, who we are, and after that straight uh, for the topic. And then uh, the first section, uh, it's about the perception or the, the deep learning part uh, of the presentation. And then a break for, for questions. And uh, after the break, uh, we uh, continue uh, with the photogrammetry part, the structure from motion part, and finally uh, the, the final remarks and the, uh, the, the final um, uh, questions uh, session. Okay. So um, uh, we are uh, from Embrapa, the Brazilian Agricultural Research Corporation. So uh, we work with research uh, for tropical agriculture and livestock. And Brazilian agriculture is mainly uh, tropical and subtropical. And, uh, this kind of agriculture um, uh, has uh, its specific challenges and we are under the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock and Food Supply in Brazil. Uh, so if you think uh, in a, a similar institution, we are for Brazil, something similar to ARS is uh, for US, uh, linked to the USDA. So uh, it's more or less uh, the, the same idea of an institution. And we are composed by more than 40 uh, units across Brazil. So working with different crops, different environments, uh, different uh, crops and challenges uh, uh, all around Brazil. Uh, so my unit specifically is Embrapa Agricultural Informatics. It's a unit devoted to IT and computing applications to agriculture. Uh, we are in Campinas, São Paulo, Southeast Brazil, and inside the uh, Unicamp campus. Unicamp is uh, one of the largest uh, research universities in Brazil, uh, Latin America, and our unit is uh, inside uh, the, the university campus. And inside the, our uh, unit, uh, we are the automation lab. Uh, our focus is uh, mainly in computer vision and more general in uh, artificial intelligence applications uh, to agriculture and automation. Okay, uh, now let's go to uh, our topic. Um, actually, our goal is the the most, uh, the, the final goal is the, the quest for a structure, or uh, if you prefer a contest awareness or ambient awareness, and different authors use uh, different terms for uh, the, the same idea. And I guess most of you uh, working with uh, automation for agriculture uh, know very well this issue. Uh, if you take, for example, in industrial-like environments, uh, you have a lot of structure. So if you, uh, you see a car maker pipeline, you have the robots. Um, the robots are in very specific sites, and the, the car appear in the conveyor belt in a very specific position, doors uh, for assembling in a very specific position so uh, you, uh, uh, all, uh, all the environment it's, uh, it's very very structured. Uh, you can think also in an Amazon's warehouse yeah so um, a robot need to take a, a package uh, the robot knows exactly uh, the rows the, the shelves and where is uh, uh, 
uh, the box the robot uh, needs to carry. So uh, uh, you have a lot of st structures, so automation uh, uh, can be uh, uh, more more easily. And the crop field, it's a very different uh, situation. Uh, crop field is semi-structured. Uh, some authors say uh, unstructured, but I, I prefer semi-structured because um, we know that breeding uh, and crop management inject a lot of structure. So you have, for example, uh, dwarf variants of wheat or uh, um, maize crops with very um, uh, a very controlled uh, leaf angle. So uh, breeding uh, inject a lot of structure in the crops, and of course the farmer management, uh, the farmer practice uh, inject more structure. So the orchards are uh, organized in rows. Uh, uh, the the wheat and maize are organized in large plots. So uh, there's a lot of structure. But uh, of course, uh, at some point, uh, you have the genotype uh, versus environment interaction and a lot of variability and uncertainty um, came uh, from these interactions. So um, if you have an apple orchard, uh, you have your apple trees organized in rows uh, that you careful uh, you, with a, a proper distance uh, between trees, but uh, you don't know, for example, where the, the apples will appear. Uh, so uh, you don't know uh, where your um, main object uh, in that scene will appear uh, and try to automate the process, for example, for uh, harvest. For, uh, uh, for harvest. Uh, so um, our goal uh, is the contest awareness, or um, you can say 3D scene understanding. Uh, Industrial-like environments that's made by design. Of course, there's a lot of sensing, uh, but uh, uh, essentially uh, you know the environment by by design. The the environment was uh, projected. Uh, in the crop field, uh, we rely a lot of in sensing. There's something in design, you have the plots, you have the rows, but uh, you need sensing to, to properly uh, infer the state of your crop, uh, and to know uh, the structures and the positions and uh, infer um, um, information from, uh, from the scene. Uh, of course, you, know, you, you have the structure, uh, you can uh, do uh, automation uh, more more easily. Um, this this topic uh, actually David Reiser in a previous webinar webinar 50 uh, discussed it. Uh, also the uh, the same topic about the structure and structure environments. So uh, of course it's a, a recurrent topic in uh, agricultural automation. Uh, so, uh, of course, if you know structure, uh, we can uh, project uh, machines able to uh, monitor and actuate uh, in, uh, in such environments. Okay. Uh, so, um, you can see that these 3D scene understanding as a combination of photogrammetry and perception. Photogrammetry, uh, you are trying to recover uh, the 3D structure uh, from the scene. So you, you are concerned about shape, about location, about pose. So uh, are you, uh, when, uh, with 3D model, we're trying to recover uh, structure. So uh, uh, find where in, in space uh, you, you can find uh, the elements that we are interested about, for example, uh, for yield estimation, uh, you are interested in the type of the fru fruits, of course, and uh, in uh, precision agriculture applications. We are also interested in see the variation in the uh, number of fruits ac uh, across the space uh, and try to infer um, uh, regions or zones that need uh, more attention or a different treatment. 
Um, and of course, uh, this information is useful also uh, for um, automated navigation and path planning uh, for robots. And of course, uh, for phenotyping, for example, if you're interested in uh, find some traits um, in your crops uh, regarding uh, volume, size, and, uh, height, and other measures, you can get uh, this kind of data from uh, a 3D model. And again, um, concerning perception, uh, so uh, 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 in perception, you are, we are trying to segment and classify what we are seeing uh, uh, in the scene. So uh, uh, try to uh, infer uh, uh, where are the objects that we're interested about, uh, if they are in the scene, where uh, uh, they are. So uh, the perception part is the segmentation and classification uh, uh, part uh, of the, the quest. So uh, for example, I will switch windows uh, again. Yes. Okay, uh, so imagine that the, uh, you have a, a camera device embedded in a tractor or a service card, uh, and you'd like to uh, scan on all your orchard or, or your vineyard, uh, trying to find um, the pattern you are interested about, for example, a disease pattern or a, a fruit pattern or, um, or, uh, or other structure uh, in the scene. So you are uh, interested in, in good perception systems, systems able to, in a very robust way, uh, um, deal with the all the variety and uncertainty uh, in the agricultural environment uh, and perform a robust, robust detection, robust classification. Okay. Uh, so uh, again, uh, 3D structure. Uh, you are uh, interested in 3D three-dimensional uh, structure like uh, geo-reference point clouds. So models that uh, you have uh, uh, the, the accurate position in space. And uh, in full 3D understanding, uh, we would like to um, uh, segment and classify uh, such 3D model and try to uh, infer the parts uh, and the elements uh, in, uh, inside the scene, inside uh, your plot, your orchard. Uh, and the input, uh, as uh, uh, you can uh, guess, uh, we're uh, trying to do that using uh, simple embedded uh, RGB cameras. So you, uh, you can measure cameras uh, embedded in a tractor, in an implement, in a service car, or cameras in UAVs, and uh, of course in the long term in robots. Uh, so uh, small uh, service robots that perform some sensing and monitoring and maybe in the future actuation uh, in, in the crop field. Uh, we saw previously in the webinar um, nice examples of um, embedded sensors and robots in the Ian presentation in webinar 52 and in the Verizon presentation in webinar in the webinar uh, 50. So uh, you you have saw uh, an nice examples of robots and embedded uh, camera device. So um, let's start uh, with perception first. So um, uh, imagine uh, that we have um, these detection tasks. We are trying to find the, the grape bunch, bunches, the, the grape clusters 
uh, in binaries. Uh, so this would be uh, an input image. And the problems you are interested about are problems like semantic segmentation. So try to infer uh, the pixels that are gray pixels uh, versus the, the background or foreground pixels. Object detection properly. So uh, uh, you are trying to find the individual branches uh, and their location uh, in the scene. And the, the most uh, Hard problem and uh, a very interesting one is the instance segmentation that you can think like the combination of the two previous tasks. Uh, you'd like to isolate uh, the clusters uh, and also uh, inside uh, the box uh, uh, classify the pixels are, are uh, pertaining or not to that specific uh instance for that specific uh, great match um, um actually uh, this is uh, a game of representation learning so we're trying to uh from the pixels trying to find an alternative representation that able to deal with uh, the variability on uh, the crop field and you will have a lot of variability uh, in outdoor uh, scenes, we have variability in light, shape, color, pose, size, the compactness, uh, for example, in the, in the case of berries like uh, wine grape, a lot of noise. Um, so uh, you need uh, to deal with uh, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of variability. And uh, we, need, we need to go with uh, again, if we change the crop, if you are working, if you are working with wine grapes and so you start working with uh, apples, you probably will need uh, to find representation uh, again, the representation that you, uh, you find for wine grapes uh, will not work probably uh, for apples. Uh, and again, if you change the, uh, the nature of your object, for example, you, if you are interested in leaves or in the trunk or a disease pattern uh, and so on. So we need a framework uh, to learn representations, some, uh, something that we can use again and again and again. Uh, uh, all the time that we, uh, we, we, are, we face uh, such uh, perceptual problems uh, uh, in the crop field. And um, right now, the, the best way to do that is using um, deep learning. Uh, and deep learning is simply um, a mathematical wood stage framework for their representations uh, from, from data. Uh, so uh, it's that framework that you can use again and again and again um, for a very different visual patterns um, uh, in, in our scenes. Um, so just reminding the, uh, the, the basic structure from the framework, you have a, a architecture, uh, the kind of network that you use, uh, this, this is the model, uh, and of course, uh, to, to make it work, to perform uh, that perceptual task like instance segmentation, uh, you need to uh, learn the right parameters uh, from a set of data, a set of observations. Uh, you use an evaluation feature function to evo uh, evaluate error and this error signal will be uh, your guide uh, signal so a, proce uh, a process of optimization um, based on gradient descent and back propagation um, will guide you uh, uh, how you change at each iteration the parameters to, uh, to become a little better the task and a little better and a little better and a little better uh, until you get probably not the optimal parameters, but parameters, parameters that are uh, useful uh, 
for the task. Maybe not the uh, not the best one because it's a very hard optimization problem, but uh, uh, good enough uh, set of parameters. Um, more exactly, uh, here in our wine uh, grape example, uh, we choose uh, mask RCNN. Uh, it's a, a convolutional neural network uh, that has a, a total set of more than uh, 60 million parameters. So it's a lot of parameters. Uh, uh, to uh, we need um, a data set that I will present uh, in the ne next slide or a wine grape uh, instance imitation data set. An evaluation function in our case it's a combination of the class loss so uh, you penalize errors in classification. Uh, our classification is grape or not grape, grape or background, foreground. Uh, plus a box loss, uh, so the, the, uh, box loss that will penalize errors in the localization of the grapes, and a mask loss uh, uh, that will penalize uh, errors in pixel classification inside uh, uh, the bounding box. And in our case, uh, you're using a uh, stochastic gradient descent to, to perform. Um, to perform uh, the optimization, okay. Uh, so uh, we need uh, a, a data set. So uh, we need a lot of examples, a lot of grapes, a lot of annotation. Um, so uh, um, we we have made uh, this data set, uh, wine grape instance imitation data set that it's publicly available. Um, at Zenodo, and it's composed for uh, by uh, 300 images. Uh, actually, it's a, uh, uh, it's uh, a, a not so big uh, a number of uh, images, but we have a lot of uh, 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 grape uh, clusters. So more than uh, uh, 3,000. Uh, grape clusters, and uh, for all of them, uh, we have marked the, the bounding boxes uh, using annotation tools, and uh, for uh, more or less half of the, uh, we have also uh, created the masks for the instance imitation. So to uh, to uh, work with the task of uh, classifying uh, the pixels like um, grape or not grape inside each um, bounding box. Um, so uh, this data set was um, produced uh, for uh, a set of uh, five uh, different uh, grape varieties, Chardonnay, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, ECH. And uh, actually, uh, the or the the goal is uh, is to find a, a classifier that it's able to uh, work properly uh, with uh, uh, very different uh, group variants. Um, okay. Um, the the uh, after the uh, the selection of the images and the the bounding box annotation, we need also perform the mask annotation. And actually, it's a very, very hard um, work. Um, and we needed uh, uh, um, a proper tool for that. We have tried um, VIA, uh, VGG uh, image annotator, but for, it's quite good for um, more regular objects like cars and buildings. Uh, to mark that, mark these these objects uh, using polygons, but for the, uh, these very um, uh, complex images like grape bunches, uh, uh, the V annotator uh, it's not uh, uh, it's not very very fast, uh, uh, very useful in our case. 
So uh, we have employed uh, um, graph matching segmentation uh, algorithm developed by, by Noma and colleagues in 2012. Uh, the idea uh, of this segmentation uh, algorithm is you mark uh, with scribbles uh, the image, uh, giving examples um, of um, your foreground and background uh, elements. And uh, uh, these scribbles will be used to create um, a graph and by graph matching uh, for the, uh, the full image, uh, you can um, get a, a, a quite nice uh, uh, transfer uh, from the scribbles to, uh, to the final image. Uh, it's a, a very uh, interesting uh, algorithm. So if you're interested about, uh, you should uh, take a look at normal work. And using uh, their, um, uh, their tool, uh, we created a uh, um, annotation uh, desktop program using Python, uh, TK-based uh, interface. So uh, you can uh, mark uh, the, uh, the grapes with the scribbles and in an iterative way, uh, trying to find um, a good, a good mask uh, for each grape. Um, and uh, these two uh, have allowed to us to create uh, all the masks uh, that we have used in, in our data set. And probably these two would be useful for, for other groups. So you have plans to release it as an open source to uh, next year. So uh, uh, you should uh, send me an email uh, if you are interested uh, in the tool. Um, I, I really uh, try my best to release it uh, uh, next year. Okay, oh, of, of course you can use um, other uh, tools, um, for example, uh, VIA, and we have actually a lot of um, uh, different annotators applications um, uh, available uh, right now. So uh, if you have a, a, a data set, no, uh, you can now choose on, on architecture. Um, in our paper, uh, we have uh, tried uh, the YOLO network for object detection but also the mask rcnn uh, network that it's uh, a very interesting uh, architecture for uh, uh, instant segmentation tasks and it's a, a very complex architecture uh, actually because uh, it's a composition of uh, sub architectures so you have a feature extra extraction net based in, in residual networks you have a Pyram uh, network for mood scale, uh, FPN. You have a region proposal network, uh, RPN. Uh, RPN is an alternative for the, um, the previously uh, a, a very used in the past approach of uh, sliding windows. So we, uh, uh, you take your input image, uh, split this, Im uh, this image in tiles and try uh, uh, perform uh, detection in, in, in for e in each tile uh, using a sliding window uh, approach. Uh, RPN is an alternative way uh, to do it. Uh, you have a sub network proposing uh, regions, proposing uh, rectangular regions that are um good candidates to uh, uh, to contain to uh, um, uh, identify uh, the position the region the image where is your object of interest uh, after you have uh, a region proposal uh, you have uh, finally an um, object detector network in the, in the case is uh, the FAST-R-CNN. 
that is a bounding box regressor and classification. So um, you perform the uh, a regression for uh, the position of the bounding box, uh, the, uh, the center of the, the bounding box, the, the, dimension, uh, uh, the dimensions of the bounding box, uh, trying to perform a good fit uh, to the object uh, that are in, uh, that you are trying to detect uh, uh, in the image. And of course, uh, the, the proper classification, but in our case, we have just one class, the, the fruit class, the, the grid class. Uh, and finally, uh, you have a free convolutional network, an FC, uh, uh, that performs the, uh, the semantic segmentation uh, part, the, the classification of pixels inside the bounding box as um, uh, pertaining to, uh, to that instance or, or not. Uh, so to properly uh, evaluate uh, the results, uh, we have to remember the concept of intersectional origin. And so imagine that you have a prediction A and a ground truth uh, B, so the intersection of over union, uh, it's a way to uh, evaluate the, uh, uh, the proper fit between the prediction uh, and then ground truth. So it's uh, simply a ratio between the, uh, the area of the intersection between A and B uh, and the union of the uh, A uh, and B. And uh, the intuition, uh, it's quite simple. Uh, values closer to one, better the fit between the prediction uh, and uh, the ground truth mask. Okay. Uh, so using the, the test set part of our data set, uh, you have reached for uh, the, the grape instance imitation uh, some uh, very interesting results. Uh, so um, an F1 score of uh, more than 90%, uh, P is the traditional precision uh, metric, uh, R is the recall metric. So uh, uh, for uh, um, intersection over union around uh, 30%, uh, we have a very, uh, uh, a very interesting results in precision and recall and uh, for the F1 score. And <coughs> in other works in the literature, uh, numbers uh, like 30% uh, IOU or 40% uh, IOU are used, for example, in works using works on uh, rock melons and grapes and almonds by other authors like uh, Inkyu Sa or uh, Bargotti and Underwood with apples and almonds. Uh, and of course, uh, if you are employing uh, 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 higher values of uh, intersection of union, for example, 19%, uh, you have a, a a more uh, a hard fit and uh, performance uh, uh, will not look so uh, so good. But uh, I will talk more about that in a moment. So uh, let's see some some results. So uh, uh, on left you have the prediction by mask RCNN, and on the right uh, the result by uh, 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 actually, uh, the ground truth on, on the right, and you can see uh, a very, uh, very interesting uh, result uh, gotten by Mascar CNN. This is an um, example for the, the Chardonnay variety. Uh, here, an um, example for the Cabernet Franc. Here, the Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, and Sihar. 
so uh, uh, it sounds very, uh, very, uh, very interesting, uh, but you can find some disagreements uh, between uh, the segmentation proposed by the network and the segmentation uh, in the ground roof. Uh, for example, you can see in the, the yellow uh, uh, cluster uh, on the left, uh, the Mascar CNN proposed uh, a big uh, uh, a big bunch, uh, but in the ground roof, you can see uh, that the annotator uh, indicates uh, two, uh, two bunches. Uh, but uh, bes uh, bes uh, beside these uh, disagreements, uh, the, the result uh, looks uh, very, uh, very interesting. Uh, grip annotation uh, is quite uh, challenging, um, even for humans, because uh, if you are not in the field, and you, you, if you have not uh, information about the 3D data, even to you, the human not annotator, uh, it's hard to separate, to separate and split uh, large agglomerations of uh, grip bunches. Uh, so uh, our own data set is error prone regarding segmentation. Uh, and of course, uh, if you have errors in the data set, uh, we are uh, penalizing uh, the, the results of the network. So for example, in the ground roof here in blue, in the center of the image, you can see um, a, big, uh, a big cluster. But uh, actually, the network uh, uh, on the left proposed uh, actually two bunches, uh, two uh, smaller uh, bunches. And to be honest, uh, probably uh, uh, the result of the, the mask arsenal is a more plausible uh, result. Probably uh, what you have here is uh, a set of uh, two uh, smaller bunches uh, instead a big and bifurcated bunch. Uh, on the left, you have a, a, a quite difficult uh, scenario. Uh, we don't know actually uh, who is right uh, here. So uh, if uh, it's the, the network that predict um, a big uh, bunch uh, or uh, the ground roof that uh, proposed another big bunch bunch but with a different configuration so uh, actually with in the absence of, of 3d data uh, we cannot uh, uh, actually uh, have a, a be complete completely sure about uh, what what's the uh, the right uh, the right segmentation so uh, in such dubious cases uh, uh, undermines the evaluation a bit but uh, the, the good news is that we can use uh, 3d data uh, to try to uh, solve uh, these issues um, i will talk about it uh, in the second part of the presentation uh, so returning to the intersection over union uh, when you see um, that um, 90% intersection over union threshold, and you can see the so low uh, precision and recall results. Uh, we can think uh, we are losing a lot of berries uh, with uh, a so low uh, recall. Uh, so uh, we are lo losing uh, the, the great berries. But actually, if you see the semantic segmentation results, uh, remember, the semantic segmentation task is just concerned in classify each pixel as uh, grape or not grape. And actually, for this uh, this task, uh, we have actually uh, a very uh, high values for uh, precision and and recall. And that means probably that we are not losing lots of grapes, uh, as we have seen. Uh, in the images, uh, most of the of the grapes are covered. Uh, this is just uh, probably just the fact that instant segmentation is a hard problem, 
uh, even to our human annotators. So uh, higher values of intersection of our union um, uh, make uh, the, the divergence in, uh, in the ground truth uh, 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 penalize uh, uh, the evaluation of our instance segmentation results. But actually, uh, uh, we are uh, getting uh, most of the, the berries, the, the grape berries, uh, right. Uh, another uh, very important issue regarding uh, the perceptual phase uh, is generalization. So um, I created, I have created a data set, I have trained my data set, the, re the results in the data set looks good, uh, but uh, um, in the real world. So if I, uh, uh, I'm going to a different farm, a different vineyard, uh, more, my neural network uh, will perform uh, well or not. So to, uh, trying to check uh, this, uh, we uh, took uh, some images from the internet in very different situations from the original, uh, very, very different from the original data set and try or mask our RCNN uh, with no turning. Uh, the same parameters, uh, the, the, the same configuration, uh, no modification, just, uh, just run the inference and check the results. So uh, here you have a different rate variety and a different pose. And actually the network presented not a, a far from perfect result, but a very, uh, a very interesting one, uh, considering uh, it's a completely uh, different uh, variety, a very uh, distinct pose. Uh, you have uh, some some interesting response from, from the network. Uh, here again, all other example, different pose, different uh, variety and elements not, uh, not seen previously, like uh, an operator, uh, farm worker, and a tool. And we again uh, get some uh, quite interesting uh, results. I, here, uh, different poles and leaves are presenting a different pattern. Uh, you have uh, here an interesting case where uh, the pattern in the leaves uh, was confused. Uh, the network uh, confused uh, the pattern as, as a grape, but uh, again, uh, the results uh, are not uh, that bad. Uh, even for a very, very different uh, image. And here, uh, I guess the, the most interesting uh, case, uh, different developmental stage. So, uh, would the network uh, looks, uh, work, uh, works uh, well for a different uh, developmental stage? Uh, uh, we see here uh, that probably the network is looking for the uh, more compact bunches uh, that uh, you can find in the training data set. Uh, so for this case, uh, we need uh, some, some tuning or uh, a different uh, data set for uh, different developmental stages or uh, an extended uh, data set. Uh, but uh, considering all the images, uh, you have some evidence uh, that you have a, a kind of impressive uh, generalization ability. So uh, if we employ some fine tuning uh, of this pre-trained model problem, prob probably uh, it, will, it could could uh, work very well in, uh, in different scenarios. Uh, so if you get uh, more data for that specific scenario, you can just fine tune uh, the network and get, um, and get uh, uh, nice, nice results. So uh, it's time for the, the break. Uh, 
uh, this, uh, questions break. Okay, very good. So, um, yeah, so if you would ask your questions, and you can put them in a Q&A box, and to be honest, I, ask, I check multiple places for questions, so if you have trouble figuring out where exactly to put them, just put them any place we've been interacting, and I grab them from the YouTube uh, chat, too. Okay, so uh, there was one question that came up, is, is the annotation tool that you use publicly available? Uh, uh, not yet. Uh, okay. I uh, 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 next year uh, because uh, for right now it's limited to just one class or a few classes, and we would like to uh, 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 to create a more uh, complete tool able to uh, deal with um, a lot of classes. And also, you are using the, uh, an external bounding box annotator. We would like to uh, present a complete tool that includes uh, the bounding box annotation and the mask annotation. All right. And then a question that I had when you were talking about the uh, success or, or non-success of the semantic segmentation, you know, in the tough cases when sometimes the, the clusters occlude each other, is uh, what is important for this application? Is it that you identify individual clusters or that you are able to compute cluster volume? I mean, what is it that growers want? What questions do they want uh, answered? Um, what do they want, uh, you know, <laughs> what, what we're all trying to figure out? <laughs> Oh, uh, th this is an important question because uh, actually uh, uh, you are trying uh, uh, here work with the fundamental bricks. Uh, so uh, we can derive uh, a lot of different uh, applications uh, from these fundamental bricks. And of course, uh, we can perform some adaptions uh, uh, for, for, each, uh, for each scenario. Um, for example, for uh, robotic uh, uh, harvesting, uh, you probably need the, uh, a proper uh, uh, instance segmentation because um, imagine a robotic arm trying to uh, detach uh, uh, the cluster from, uh, from the plant, so uh, you need trying to individualize each uh, uh, each bunch um, okay but for for yield prediction uh, maybe some segmentation uh, uh, you, uh, it's fine uh, but uh, I will show uh, next uh, using the 3d data uh, another way to to deal with uh, yield prediction is trying to infer the volume of the, the bunch because you are not seeing uh, uh, all the grapes, but uh, you could estimate the volume and then perf perform a regression uh, for the weight, for example. Uh, in such okay. case, the instant segmentation, uh, again, uh, uh, it's important. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, uh, of course, uh, different tasks and, and different applications, uh, you can tune uh, uh, and choose the, uh, 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 the proper perceptual problem that you, you are trying to, uh, uh, trying to work on. I see. Yeah, I was just thinking of yield estimation, but I, of course, if you are thinking about harvest, you need to know what's in an individual bunch so you can remove the individual, individual individual clusters. Okay, very good. Are there any other questions? I haven't seen any other questions in the um, uh, box. Oh, and there was, was a question on the YouTube live if, if the data set is available and it has been released and it's all available from the link that I've shared with you at the IEEE ADRA. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if there are other questions, then we'll just uh, keep on going. Thank you, Thiago. Okay, let's go. 
uh, the photogrammetry uh, part. Uh, so, uh, okay, um, how can we get uh, 3D information uh, without, for example, a, a LiDAR system or other uh, kind of um, laser scanning? Um, actually, uh, the computer vision community and the robotic community uh, have developed uh, this very uh, interesting framework of street from motion. Um, so, the idea, uh, of course, is to uh, recover the 3D structure from the scene, and for that, you need also try to. Uh, uh, discover the the pose, the position of the cameras, and or the po the, the position uh, of a single camera uh, moving uh, in the space. Uh, and if you you are able to find the correspondences between uh, uh, the same point in each uh, image, you can uh, you have. Um, uh, Algorithms based in project uh, projective geometry and optimization that are able uh, to uh, from a large set of uh, correspondences between images uh, define uh, uh, the position of the camera and I and perform a projection uh, uh, from the pixel. Uh, you can recover. Uh, by triangulation, uh, the position of the 3D point uh, uh, in the space. Uh, and the robotics or real-time version of this is SLAM, the simultaneous localization and mapping. Uh, so you can see the camera as a small robot uh, navigating in the world. Uh, the robot uh, uh, doesn't know uh, uh, doesn't have information about the world, so uh, the robot uh, needs to simultaneously uh, map the world, create a 3D uh, model for the world, and localize uh, itself uh, uh, in, in this world. Um, uh, localize uh, itself is the same problem that uh, localize uh, the, the, the position, uh, the pose of the camera. And using uh, multiple view stereo, um, we, we are able to take uh, this, uh, this 3D model from street from motion that is generally uh, a sparse model. Uh, you just see um, a sparse uh, set of 3D points covering the surfaces of the objects in, in the scene. And using multiple view stereo, uh, also you have the cameras uh, positions you can perform a dense surface sampling and get a, 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 a very dense uh, 3D model, um, a very dense sampling uh, from the surface, uh, from the surfaces in the, uh, in the sea. Um, and uh, you can do it on the crop field. Um, we guess that yes, uh, we are. Uh, uh, actually, uh, we have saw uh, David Reiser in webinar 50 uh, showing an example using the, the Kinect camera. It's a RGBD camera. But uh, actually, we can do that using just uh, regular RGB cameras and through promotion. So uh, uh, I will show you two examples uh, uh, created by uh, uh, as, uh, a set of images um, gotten from a, a video sequence. So the images are uh, the keyframes uh, of the video sequence. One for a vineyard uh, row uh, gotten from the ground, a camera attached to the service car. And another example uh, with um, work on Apple Orchard uh, role, uh, image gotten by a, a draw, a UAV. So let me uh, change the windows again. Uh, so uh, so for, for the grapes role, uh, I have uh, 
I've showed it uh, it to to you in the beginning of the presentation, uh, and you can see uh, here that we can easily uh, recognize uh, um, the bunches, and of course you have the volumetric uh, information uh, in this point cloud. Once you have segmented properly uh, the grapes, you can uh, perform uh, measurements like uh, trying to find the Uh, the uh, the volume of uh, the grape bunch and, and so on and this is uh, just a strut from motion and over stereo uh, applied for uh, a video sequence uh, so we just attach it uh, on RGB camera uh, in the service card and just uh, move it uh, uh, move it in the in the row This one um, is the uh, the apples uh, orchard uh, case. So here you have um, UAV um, and, um, uh, DJI Phantom uh, recorded uh, a video moving uh, across across the line, and this is uh, the 3D model of uh, after a stood from motion and over stereo. And actually, you can see uh, here uh, some, uh, some apples. Uh, Thiago? Uh, oi, hi. Uh, yeah, is this supposed to be mesh, mesh lab? Uh, uh, you are not seeing... Uh, <laughs> That's correct. We're not seeing mesh lab. Uh, I didn't switch. Uh, you have saw the, the grape example? Yes. Ah, okay. And but now, not the Apple uh, one. And now? Yes, there we go. Okay. Yeah. So here we have the orchard row. Here. Uh, and yeah, you can see here uh, in the middle of the point cloud, you can see uh, some, um, some the small red balls, of course, uh, uh, are uh, the apples. Okay. So you have a lot of uh, 3D information uh, in such kind of models. So if you are, okay, uh, uh, this is the uh, the example using the the drone images. Uh, let's go back to the presentation. Sorry, I have to click the share button. Okay. Here we go. Uh, so you have a lot of information available uh, uh, after the from motion. So you know the cameras, uh, and you can, uh, if you have a robotic agent or a tractor, uh, uh, you know the position of the uh, of the agent too, and uh, you have the three D points of the objects in the scene. And you can uh, easily answer uh, a lot of interesting questions like uh, which images uh, is the object visible in? So uh, what's the set of images uh, seen uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, great bunch, for example? Uh, where's the 3D point uh, map? Uh, uh, where is that 3D point uh, XY mapped in, uh, in a specific image? So, well, what's the pixel corresponding to that uh, 3D point? And you can also perform back projection. So, uh, uh, take a pixel uh, uh, in an image and project the ray uh, in the 3D space uh, that is the, the ray associated uh, uh, to. To that pixel, uh, um, every point uh, in the three D world uh, um, lay in, in that way will map for for that pixel. And previously, in the perceptual step, uh, we saw a lot of um, 
issues regarding occlusion or regarding misdetections uh, caused uh, by dealing with a single image. But with, if we need uh, information from a lot of images and the 3D information uh, of the scene, uh, um, could we employ uh, this information to try to solve these uh, issues that we saw previously uh, in the perception phase? So uh, uh, let's uh, let's see uh, an example. So uh, in this uh, graph, what you have for each column. Each column represents a video frame, so uh, an image, and each vertex actually is uh, an instance found by the the deep learning the the, uh, the mask RCNN system. Uh, so uh, we can link uh, using the three D data that we have to link the the instance. Um, considering the, the 3D points uh, that uh, they are sharing. So if you have a set of 3D points that are mapped for an instance A in the first image and for uh, instance B in the second image, you can create a link, uh, uh, an edge between the two instances uh, because uh, 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 the, the, the two instances are two observations of the same, the same object, the same grape. And uh, you have a lot of uh, 3D points mapping to uh, this, uh, the same uh, two instances. Uh, you have a lot, a lot of evidence um, that uh, they are probably seeing uh, the same thing. And of course, if you have a misdetection uh, grip bunch uh, that uh, you have lost, uh, you could detect it uh, again uh, further in, in uh, 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 um, um, more uh, uh, open pose, um, a more frontal po uh, pose, for example. Uh, and you can um, use uh, this 3D information, these edges, trying to recover from these detections and allocate uh, a localization, uh, 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 a great bunch that uh, you have lost at some point uh, in, the, uh, uh, in, in the video stream. So, uh, um, if you analyze uh, these uh, these relations, uh, kind of 3D reasoning, uh, you you find you able to track uh, the grab bunches. So uh, in each uh, each track here is associated uh, is a, uh, the track of one uh, grape bunch uh, across the time across the uh, the multiple frames. So the longest paths uh, using the heaviest edges, uh, uh, the edges with more evidence uh, uh, linking uh, two instances in two different moments, uh, the longest paths uh, are, associati are associated to instance tracks. So uh, the, the, uh, the, the places that uh, you found uh, the same uh, grape bunch uh, in the video stream. And the tracks also integrate multiple poses, uh, multiple frames, uh, and avoid multiple counting for the same cluster. So, of course, uh, you are seeing the same grape cluster in multiple images, and for a yield prediction uh, system, you would not uh, count uh, twice uh, the, uh, the, same, the same bunch. Uh, you can also recover, uh, relocalize, uh, redetect uh, a missed uh, or occluded cluster. So let's see uh, an example. So we have here uh, three bunches, uh, 49, 47, 48, uh, and we are uh, keeping uh, running uh, the detection, and finally, you can see 
other bunches and after uh, after some time uh, seeing a new bunch uh, uh, you uh, create an, a new instance and, and you can recover for example uh, from um, uh, a case of occlusion uh, so uh, uh, the, the neural network inferred that uh, you have a this big uh, blue uh, cluster, cluster 48, but uh, seen in a different pose, you can actually uh, see uh, the, um, the big bunch is actually uh, two smaller bunches, uh, and you can uh, see it clearly in a, a, different, uh, a different camera pose. Here uh, you have uh, uh, another interest case, uh, the bunch uh, 52. Uh, we have lost uh, it for a moment uh, in a frame, but uh, uh, you can uh, recover uh, integrating um, the information from the previous and, uh, and next frames and uh, allocate the the missing bunch uh, again. So let's see uh, an example. So this, uh, the example uh, uh, showing for uh, a video stream recording the, the entire row. Uh, of course, you have some, some errors, but uh, the system uh, uh, performed actually uh, quite well um, uh, using the 3D information to uh, deal with occlusions and uh, some uh, missed, missed uh, grapes, missed bunches. So uh, um, um, let's uh, let me finish the, the presentation. Uh, um, so deep learning, uh, as we you know, it's a powerful framework for to learn representations for data. Uh, and in the agricultural case, we have a lot of variability that can be uh, properly uh, addressed by by deep learning, uh, considering the, your data set. Uh, present uh, such variability. Uh, there is true from motion assistance uh, that co map and open drone map or uh, visual SFM. You have a lot of options. You have also commercial, commercial options like uh, Pix4D or uh, AgeSoft PhotoScan. So you have a lot of systems. Uh, open source and commercial that are able to give you um, 3D models uh, just for uh, from uh, RGB images and uh, if you combine with the perceptual uh, step you can uh, employ uh, these systems to perform 3D reasoning uh, and get more uh, accurate results uh, in the case of perception, and of course, uh, organize and recover uh, all the structure uh, in the field. And of course, uh, some measurements that are uh, um, uh, properly uh, presented by 3D models, like estimations for height or volume, can be uh, properly uh, estimated. And for future work, uh, we're interested about um, um, a deeper integration between the deep learning uh, 
uh, step and the student promotion. So how can deep learning help student promotion and vice versa? How uh, student promotion can benefit from deep learning? And of um, uh, even more uh, interesting, uh, how we can employ uh, deep learning for the 3D reason phase. Uh, we're also interested in the scale issues. Uh, so imagine that we are trying to get the 3D model for an entire orchard, an entire uh, vineyard uh, plot. Uh, so we have a lot of performance and um, large scale issues related to uh, perform 3D reconstruction for entire plots. And of course, we, we need also a lot of on-farm research to try to uh, get uh, really uh, interesting applications for farmers, for example, to develop and validate, uh, for example, a good prediction uh, system. Um, of course, res uh, research needs uh, a lot of hands and, and brains, so uh, this work uh, got a lot of help of a lot of colleagues. I would like to uh, thank Luciano, Sandra, Leonardo, Andresa, Luis, Luciano Geber, Amy, uh, and the Gasper Winery for, for all the support and help and work. And finally, uh, thank you. Uh, and you can also uh, see the, the, full, uh, the full paper in the preprint form. Uh, the, the final version uh, is under revision and should appear uh, in, uh, in a, a journal uh, next year, but you can check uh, right now the preprint and we can uh, go to the final questions. Amy. Okay, great. So we have um, one um, question. It concerns um, Real-time performance, so um, wondered why is real-time performance not in future work or, well, and that was one of my questions too, is that how, how long does it take to acquire those um, point clouds of the entire row, uh, because that was a lot of images, I think. Uh, to perform strict for motion, uh, for example, using cold map, uh, uh, Stroke promotion uh, uh, can be uh, can run. Uh, um, actually, uh, it doesn't take so long. Uh, the multiple view stereo that give you the dense point clouds uh, it takes uh, hours and hours for a single row. Uh, but uh, if you go to the Islam set setting, uh, actually you have real time uh, Islam systems. Uh, for example, you can see orb slam. Uh, for example, it's a, a nice example of uh, a system. Uh, Islam system it can run uh, real time or I guess uh, 15 frames per second or so on. So uh, a real time alternative for promotion is Islam. Uh, multiple view studio, it's the uh, uh, it's very intensive, but you could uh, employ, for example, uh, RGBD camera. You can use, for example, um, uh, um, Stereo Labs Z camera, or an Intel Real Sense camera, or even the, the Kinetic. But I guess a Microsoft Kinetic is not more in the market uh, right now. But uh, David Reiser showed it to us. Uh, um, in the previous webinar, uh, a nice example using uh, connected. Uh, so uh, actually, you can get uh, that information and 3D information in real time uh, using uh, through promotion or Islam or uh, uh, another kind of sensor. Uh, okay, 